Bienvenido a todos. So last time I was in the process of making the ears and the hands. So these are the little hands and these are the little ears. And these of course are the parts that I made last time. So now we're gonna be in the process of putting it all together. And then once I put it all together, I have to make the scarf for the little bear but that can be an after the fact thing. And part of the plan is figuring out how I'm going to sew this together. Because usually I just like to get a super long thing. I could sew all one go and then it's all good. But because of the way the hands are, I won't be able to do that. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make I'm gonna start on one of the arms. I'm gonna go all the way around and then finish on the other arm and then that's part of it. And then I'm gonna start on the other arm, the other side of that arm and then I'm gonna go all the way around until I reach the side and seal it off and then start on the other arm and then flip it inside out and then like Jesus, there's going to be a cut in the side from where we're going to stuff everything. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's my plan. The head's a bit wonky, but we're going to make it work. And we're going to put it together with stitch markers that I also use kind of like safety pins. Which, this is the reason why I love this particular type of stitch marker so much, like the open loop one, because they work very well for this. <laughs> so we're gonna put that there. And we're gonna slide the ears. I probably should have slid the ears in first, honestly. But I couldn't really see where that went, yeah. going to slide the ears in that way. There we go. And I'm putting the right sides together so that way once it's all sewn I can just flip it inside out and it hides a lot of the seams. Something I learned very very young because I learned how to sew a long time before I learned how to um, knit. You see, I remember learning how to knit. I do not remember learning how to sew. I know it must have happened, but I do not remember the very first time I ever used a needle. Because mom taught me at a very, very young age. She used to make pillows for us and she taught us how to stuff the pillows. So I, I do have memories of that. I remember learning how to needlepoint because I learned that the same year I learned how to knit. There we go. So we have the part that I initially want to sew largely connected at this point. And now I'm just kind of hoping that sets it up right for the rest of it. And also that the yarn will fit through the needle because that's not necessarily a guarantee either. Um, anyway, we'll just still start with a lot. We got yarn to spare. I should have gone and got my sewing needles, but oh, sewing scissors, but ew. There we go. And with knitting, 
because you're sewing through a fabric that is largely holes, part of it is making a knot that's big enough that it won't go through one of the holes. So I often just do a couple stitches like that. And then I tie a knot that way. And that usually makes a very big, thick, juicy knot. And often I try to weave these ends back in, but because it's gonna be inside, we don't care. <laughs> so let's start the actual sewing and they want me to back stitch this, but I think it's gonna be easier to whip stitch it. And again, the picture, like when you flip it inside out, they're not gonna know, so it doesn't really. Oh, that makes it a little bit more awkward that way, but I can see it easier. What is nice about this is sometimes they have like ready-made stitches, you know, because, well, they have ready-made loops that you can go through. So it's kind of like when you're stitch, similar to when you're stitching a plastic canvas where it already has the holes. Or like when you're cross stitching and you can see the particular holes you have to put the thread through. Hmm. Keeps getting the tail there, okay. I should think of a name for this bear. I mean, I kind of want it to be an O name because of Osito, but the only O names I can think of in Spanish are male names and I kind of want to make this a female bear. Oh, well, there's Octavia, but that's not really Spanish. The only other like Spanish names I could think of are like Oscar. Oh, there's also Odubel, but we are not naming this after Odubel Herrera. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting close to going through the ear. No nodding unnecessarily, please. through where the stitch marker is. Take the stitch marker out. There we go. Oh, you can name the bear October. <laughs> October El Osito. <laughs> Despite the fact it's being made in June and not October.
You know, October was like the eighth month of the year at one point. Until a certain narcissist named Caesar decided to have, in this case, I mean both Caesars, Augustus and Julius. They're responsible for July and August. And that's how October came to be the 10th month instead of number eight. I don't know if that's completely true or not, but it definitely makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, I found out about that through the internet and we know the internet is like a chaotic wonderland of nonsense and fact. My bear is getting caught on itself. Maybe this is an Oscar. Who knows? This might be an Oscar. No, I still have quite a bit of yarn left here. So I can keep on sewing with it if I weave the ends through one of the sides so I can get to the other side of the arm without sewing that other part shut. And then, because I, I've got a feeling it's gonna be easier to sew the hands on if I'm sewing it onto a loop instead of sewing it on while the arm parts are still separate. All right, so we're gonna replace stitch markers and other important parts of the bear. So we're gonna get the armpits. And then we're gonna get the legs. Well, the crotch here. Very important that we get the crotch lined up. There we go. Probably like 
another point like right there. And another point like right there. When I get to like right about there, I should probably start considering turning the bear inside out. All right. So let's start weaving the yarn through some stitches here just to pull it through in a non-disruptive way. You know, I had this motto for when I feel like having fun at work. It's basic that the motto is be a distraction, not a disruption. Because lots of people are doing mindless jobs or they're doing jobs they've done many, many times before. Maybe not so many now because there's lots of new people. But uh, it's like when you, it's like, I want to like, I want what I do to like be a nice distraction today. It's like, oh, I get to think about something else and not a disruption is like, I get to think about something else, but also work has completely stopped. <laughs> so, uh, it can be a very fine line to toe, quite honestly. But it's very similar to like the idea of pranks in general, like, although not every distraction is a prank. Um, if I'm thinking about a prank, I want to play on people. My guiding line is, is this a prank that I would be okay with having been played on me? Um, because it's like, how would the recipient feel about this? And if it's a type of prank that I'm okay having like been the butt of a joke of, I have no problem playing it on other people, but if uh, I would absolutely hate being the recipient of such a prank, I don't play it on other people. <laughs> Which is why I don't really do food re related pranks so much because I would absolutely hate that. Um, There was one time in high school, um, I took a piece of loose leaf paper and I wrote the word gullible on it. And then I took the piece of paper and I taped it to the ceiling and my seat was right by the door. So I told lots of people hey, uh, gullible's written on the ceiling. And people were refusing to look up because if they looked up, that meant they were gullible. <laughs> and it's like, no, but actually, gullible is written on the ceiling. <laughs> and some people did look up and went like, oh, yeah, it is. And come to think of it, there are a lot of things I got away with during high school. I'm surprised I got away with, and that is one of them. <laughs> In that same class, um, that was advisory, that was homeroom. Uh, the teacher would also have someone read the announcements. So I waited for a day that I believed would be a friend of mine who would be reading it. And the announcements, instead of being over the loudspeaker, they were on a long sheet of paper with black ink and the teacher would have one person read it aloud to the class. So <laughs> I added an announcement <laughs> saying something like, due to the paper shortage, please use both sides of the toilet paper. Thank you. And then I signed it S. Pavel, which was the name of the school's president, which 
in most high schools to be the principal, but because my high school offered actual degrees um, rather than just diplomas, our uh, principal was a president. But I got the naming of the, I, I got the order of the person wrong and actually ended, someone else actually ended up reading it. Someone who uh, I wasn't quite as friendly with. And she and everyone else were highly confused <laughs> when that was read out. I did end up graduating with an honorary degree. You, the qualifications for getting an honorary degree was essentially like having your grade point average above a certain level. And I had my grade point average above that level for pretty much all of high school. There was a time I was worried I wasn't going to get it. But I got the required, like, grades for it. So I technically have two bachelor degrees. One of them is just honorary. Although it is probably the hardest anyone has ever had to work for an honorary degree. But the reason why my high school, like, even offered degrees like that was, um... They were a pretty prestigious school. They uh been open since like 1836, I want to say, as a high school. And there was like a point where like when it was the only public high school um in the area uh they like I think like the mayor granted like all the all certain schools in the area to be able to give out degrees and that was my school was one of them hence why I was able to get a degree there you go Fair is mostly sewn. Just gotta sew that part. Sew the little hands. Then I can flip it inside out and stuff this guy. That's approximately the start of the arm there. Let's get our way to the armhole here.
There you go. And then we're going to go slightly down below the armhole. All right. There we go. That's the bear. So now I, what I got left to do before I can turn it inside out, cause you can see there's like these holes is I gotta sew on the hand. So one of these, I was able to leave like long enough that I think I can use the string to like actually sew it on. The other one, not so much because you can see yarn decides to snap on me. And like in a couple of places, the yarn is actually like cut and it's like how did that even happen it's like quite a clean cut but it is what it is so we're going to fold I'm going to treat that as the top we're going to fold it in half and we're just going to sew it across the way here There we go, then we can just weave the end very similar to how we did it on the other armhole, just to bring the yarn back. You know, I'm knitting another like stuffed animal at the moment and I think some of the yarn from the other stuffed animal got into this yarn and it's like it's not for this stuffed animal cool it <laughs> oh I sewed the wrong side together womp womp okay <laughs> easy fix Flip it back the other way. We sew it the other way. Quite honestly, no one's going to notice. Compared to other things in my life, any mistakes don't really phase me as much. I feel positively Bob Rossian with those, if I make a mistake when I'm knitting. It's not that big of a deal, it's just a happy accident. Mistake in other parts of my life. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So this clearly isn't the right part, but we're just gonna spread this guy out like this and hope for the best. There we go. It's, it was getting caught and it's like, it didn't need to get caught. Gonna make sure that hole gets closed too. Boom. We have now made it all the way around. And we're just gonna make a big ugly knot because we can. <laughs> this is gonna be on the inside. No one's gonna see it. It 
And now we're gonna kind of weave the end in in some sort of fashion. Boom. Sneep, sneep, sneep. And now we're gonna fold this the other way, the way it was supposed to be. There you go. Ah, the needle came out. I can see obviously I do not have enough yarn. That's okay, we can get more. We have plenty. Just gonna feed the yarn through just to hold the end tight. Snip, snip, snip. And we're gonna get more yarn and hope it's enough. There we go. Right. And now we're getting close to the point where we need to attach it to the arm. Let's get the other arm. And you kind of hope it fits. Yeah, you know, often I make like very nice crocheted pieces or very nice knitted pieces and then I sew them together and it's like this is a lot more wonky than I was expecting it to be. <laughs> I am heavily relying on the inside out trick right now. I'm really relying on it to give it me its magic. Right. Now 
just going to weave that end a little bit. Through some stitches. Boom. All right. All the pieces are attached with the exception of the one that isn't made yet. So now we're going to turn the bear inside out. Ooh. There we go. Now let me go get the polyfill. It is across the room. I have a big box of the polyfill because I've learned I will use it all. And you, when you use something a lot, it's just better to buy it in bulk. <laughs> So, yeah. I was taught when you stuff something, you like pull it apart just in case there's like little bits that look like that. You can see it. So that way it like comes looser and it's like better stuffed inside. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but it was what I was taught. So I've just stuck with it after all this time. Okay. Trying to stuff the polyfill into the hand right there. There we go. Oh, that's a really big hole. Oh. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to fit all that polyfill into the bear, but not all at once. Oh, you know, I thought I heard someone talking and then I realized it's dad's week to be the eye side. So he could be awake, which there was problems at work. So that's not at his work. So that's not necessarily a good sign. I saw it as such a weird name. go more of that this should be enough just to stuff one of the legs I'm, I'm hoping oh even more actually is needed
And I think we've reached the point. Oh my gosh. This is giving me such minion vibes. I don't know why it's giving me such minion vibes, but it is. All right. There's the needle. There's the needle. There you go, almost there. As it did you my nose. There we go. Then we weave the end in in a place where it can't possibly come out. There's the teddy bear. What a wonky little thing, isn't it? And uh, it's missing something. It needs the bufanda. So, uh, necesito un bufanda. Por eso, uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Uh, estoy haciendo lo, maybe. So it's pretty simple. I just got to cast on eight stitches of another yarn, which I decide I'm going to use this, give it a little bit of fun, and work in uh, punto bobo for 30 centimeters and then put the scarf around the bear so I'll be back and here we go I have finished el osito have a little scarf on it and giving the head a little bit of a more of a shape which this again was the picture I was working from so Pretty close. Uh, still a bit wonky, but the pattern itself was wonky. But yeah, I knitted something in a language I don't fully understand, and it came out pretty close to where it was supposed to be. So I'm I'm very happy with this. Um, I think we will be going with Oscar Elosito for this person or this bear. And that was today's entertainment. Have a nice day.